Love podcast, hate nonsense is the politics show podcast. <laughs> Just the two of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Ollie is away today. He's actually advising Keir Starmer on his new climate policy. <laughs> but I am joined by Capital J journalist Ava Evans, Ava Santina, a woman of many names. Yeah, I've been away for a week. I was uh, open, open, <laughs> that was the second bit to that, which I was going to say. I was opening a new oil field. I thought you were just like justifying your absence to the listeners. No, no. How, how was your time off? Was it nice? Well, yeah, it was great. Except I noticed that you two were having a really nice time on the podcast. So I'm at the airport. And I thought, oh, I'll just have a little listen to the podcast and I'll see what they were all up to. And the first thing is like, just the boys. <laughs> oh, don't we love it's it? It's important for men to have, it's important for men's mental health. Yeah. To have time with no women. Yeah. And it's important for the listener to know I'm not wearing shoes. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay us a grand, you can get access to the special feet cam. <laughs> <laughs> We've installed under the table. We've employed an intern to sit with a GoPro. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of renegade video, let's talk about Ben Leo. Oh, yeah. What a video. So for, if you've not seen this, Ben Leo, who's the, the program editor for Dan Wooten Tonight. Mm. Is that the name of Dan Wooten's program? I, well, Dan Wooten's fantastic, fantastic the killer I don't know show if on it's on GB tonight News. is it still on I think it's still on is it really but um, he <laughs> so in response to Greenpeace activists climbing to the roof of Rishi Sunak's house Ben Leo and the cameraman went into Greenpeace's HQ somewhere mm. uh, and we're going to play the clip now I'm Ben from GB News GB News thank yeah. you is, is Will or Reba here uh, not really. I'm looking for Will or Ariba or whoever, whoever, whoever's idea that was to invade Rishi Sunak's house. Hello, Ariba. How are you doing? Thanks yeah, for, uh, for having us. Was that your idea to invade Rishi Well, you weren't Rishi's... invited, first of all. We weren't uh, invited? No, you weren't. Oh, how ironic. Uh, you, were you invited to Rishi Sunak's house this morning? Uh, he's the Prime Minister of the country. I'm just going to make myself a cup of tea, if that's all right. Uh, Who thinks Sunak's house invasion was a good idea? Anyone? What team do you guys work in? Are you press? Marketing, who, who's the giga brain that invented that idea today? And also, why don't you do it in China? Go to President Xi Ping's house. Do you think you get the same reception? No? No answers. Nothing to say, just smirks. Just sullen smirks. You're paid 100 grand a year for ideas like that. Are you going to apologise for, for what you've done what today? What I apologise for? For turning up at uh, not just a Prime Minister's well, house, a, pro a private man's home if where he lives with his family. It doesn't matter. Speak, Does it? I will answer your speak. question. Yeah. Defend it. Yeah, it was a peaceful protest, and the Prime Minister has allowed hundreds of new oil and gas licences. So you think it's justified turning up to a man's private home where he lives with his family because he's approved oil and gas licences? He wasn't there. That was a matter of national news. We checked before going. We made sure there was nobody there. It was planned with utmost care, with care for security. He wasn't there. We knocked on the door. First, there was no answer. He knocks but on the door, so he jumps on his roof. Is that right? He knocked on the door to identify who we were. Are you going to apologise? No, I'm not going to apologise. We held him to account for a decision that he has backed, which is a disastrous decision. Do you know what percent of global emissions the UK is responsible for? Um, you must have. You're paid 100, 100k a year, so you must know. I mean, it's around 1%, 2%. All right, OK. So why aren't you going to China, to Xi Ping's palace, and doing this? We have an enormous this? campaigning organisation in China. Greenpeace are really present in China. We do tonnes of work there. Do some research. Aren't you a bunch of hypocrites? Is that right? Is that what's going why? on there? Why? What's happened now? Yeah, what's a what, 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 Why would that come up? Because you're, you're choosing to make a point here in the UK that somehow this country is doing not doing uh, its fair share I to reduce emissions. The news was really into painting the UK as a global leader. The UK has a massive... It is on carbon emissions. It's a massive... 40% 40, 40 reduction over the past two decades that you guys think is acceptable. Yeah, and we you guys think that. it's acceptable to invade a private man's family home, which is disgusting. Which, which was empty. So I hope you enjoyed that. I think, that's a, I think that's one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I think it's a piece of art. I want to hang it in the loop. It's, he comes across, it's, to describe it as partridge is just is not doing it yeah. justice. He's, th he's gone beyond partridge. I thought you wanted to get him on the podcast. I do. He's, an, he's a standing invitation to come on. Really? Oh, I would love him to come we on. We are wide open for you, Ben Leo. <laughs> <laughs> just to come on. Just, I want to like, no, I just want to find out more about him. Yeah. Like, like, how did he end up in this 
Well, we. it, okay, so let, let's actually just go through the video a little bit. So, yep. so what happens is he arrives at the offices, okay? A very nice receptionist is like, hi, how can I help you? And mm. she's, he's like, you cannot help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to see two people. <laughs> and he just storms in. And then there's this really, he's walking up the stairs and he's looking for someone. Meets her on the stairs. He's like, ah, I thought I'd find you here. She's like, yes, in my office. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, and then, then he goes, then she goes, you weren't invited. And he's <laughs> He says, how ironic! <laughs> it's, it's, it has the same energy of, you know, when someone's been like, it was like when people who weren't vaccinated or weren't, in, weren't allowed into things, when you yeah. had to show you like your vaccine pass, it's the same energy of like a front camera video yeah. from one of them screeching. Yeah. Being, and oh, the best bit is when he goes to make a, a cup of tea. No, so wait, can I also say it's also like when people want to pay cash yes. and they go yeah, up yeah, and they yeah. shout, I want to pay cash. And like, that's absolutely fine, sir. Please hand the cash over. No, oh, I won't. <laughs> it's the Magna Carta. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so when he goes to make a cup of He's tea. He's like, oh, make a cup of tea and fills up a mug with water, with yes. cold water yes. from a tap. Fantastic. Lo- loves it. That guy... I want to see more of him. I think he's, he's great. He's doing great work. I quite want to go to the GB News offices and do that was it, was for the them. Thing, imagine his reaction of what, like, say, we mm. or Novara or Byline or something like that went to the IEA yeah. and just walked in. Because yeah. He would, like, people of that ilk would be like, There's a, that is a place of business and people in a private office. <laughs> Should we read the Seb Payne tweet now? <laughs> 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 Seb Payne, who is, uh, runs a think tank called Onward. Yeah, friend um, of politics, Joe, I describe him as. Really? Yeah, well, we talk about him a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and also is going to be running, was hoping to stand as a Conservative MP in the next election. Perennial also ran in various Did he? elections. He's like, I think he came second in one recently. Again. He's getting there. Oh, he's, get- <laughs> he's getting closer. <laughs> Eventually. Um, anyway, so like Just Stop Oil painted the policy exchange think tank and he tweeted something <laughs> incredible, <laughs> which was like, man, they do really important work in there. In the think tank scene. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think Ben Leo should come. What, what would you like to ask Ben Leo? What gives you the right? <laughs> <laughs> what gives you the right? No, I wouldn't. I'd actually, I'd actually really like to talk to him. Um, I'd be like, and so this this journalism, where did you learn this? Yeah, because <laughs> it's, so, it's also, it looks like a real, I think he thinks, oh, we got those hippie green activists, but they come across very, me- kind of remarkably so. Yeah. If they didn't, they didn't, I assume they didn't know who's going to be there. And two of the more senior people at Greenpeace gave quite a measured interview to quite like, he was trying, clearly trying to get a rise out of them. Yeah. Out of them, and they just appeared much more measured than the foaming at the mouth <laughs> well he the had microphone. the microphone at his mouth and he's yep. going you're not going to answer any of my questions are you you're not going <laughs> to answer them speaking she's like yes. you can see their mouth moving and then she's like if you'd let me yeah. and he's like oh Ugh. go on then do it <laughs> so um yeah ben, ben should come on whenever he wants ben whenever you're ready we're ready oh, <laughs> imagine the tell all <laughs> interview with yeah. ben do you think he'd like it in here all um, of us here with our feet out i think he'd, i think he'd like that aspect of <laughs> I don't know. I think I think he'd. What, what wouldn't he like? Can sit, have a. We could, we could even have a drink with him. Yeah. Well, there's maybe not enough bullying goes on here. I don't know. <laughs> Wait like, till he sees that Sean Hickey, our vision mixer, is under the desk <laughs> <laughs> taking photos of his feet. <laughs> this is chaos. Why is this chaos? I don't know. I think I think um, if Ollie wasn't too concerned about <clears throat> endangering the climate, mm. he'd be here reining us in. I think it's two, two person pods seem to go off the rails slightly. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. You're on every one of them. So yeah. you're the common denominator. Yeah, so maybe I should be sacked. Is that. No. Okay. That's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> should we talk about something else? Yeah, but that's going to bring the mood down. It is going to bring we, the mood uh, down slightly. Should we do a couple more? Should we do the next topic and then come back to it? The one after that? No, let's just, oh, let's just go full in. Well, yeah, so it's going to be a real mood shift. Yeah. It's not going to be as fun. Yeah, listen, if you were looking to have fun right now. Yeah, okay, fun's over, well, guys. Yeah. Serious hats on. Grow up. We're talking about Vivi Stockholm. Yeah. Which is mental to me because I didn't realise that you named all boats. I didn't realise that was a prerequisite of boat boating. Yeah, Ava didn't know the first, the, the main kind of fact about boats. Wait, do you remember when they had that boat and it was called Boaty McBoatface? Yeah. That was like, that was really, 
that was a really great moment in time because that was really base humor that actually was quite funny. But then it's become ripped to absolute shreds. If there's any like competition to name something, people yeah. are always like, oh, Laurie McLaurie face <laughs> or something not funny. It became like a Jackie Weaver of itself. Jackie Weaver. Oh my God, that was such a great shot of her on um, like the red carpet for some Sky Atlantic program. Why is she being invited? <laughs> it came up from 2020 or whenever it was. She's she's She was being rammed down our throats. People, lots of people in the media were like, isn't she funny? No. Yeah. No is the answer. Well, actually also at the time I was optioning a few tv programs like i was like yeah yeah <laughs> Jesus. don't worry guys my my ex-boyfriend stole the script there was this whole thing afterwards <laughs> there was this whole thing <laughs> a certain channel had to pay me back for it when they realized he didn't write it and i'd written it <laughs> oh anyway God. anyway importantly um i think he's still shopping around that script you know he keeps coming back to me every now and again being like this yours <laughs> <laughs> He's such a fucking moron. It's on a PDF and it's literally got my name on it. He tries to like <laughs> he doesn't scrub know, it out. He doesn't know how to edit a PDF. <laughs> I date old men. Uh -huh. um, so <laughs> He's a 75-year-old man <laughs> struggling with an iPad. It's fancy. <laughs> He's walking in to like Hatchery Productions with an iPad. <laughs> That's actually pretty much exactly what happened. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. Um, anyway, so... Oh, yeah, that's why I was saying it. So shopping around this script and like every single time we pitched it, they were like, do you know who'd be really good on this panel? Jackie Weaver. And I'd, oh go, my God. I'd be like, why? Why? This she's, is this is meant to be funny. She's one of the least charismatic people. She was in a video and she wasn't even the best bit of the video. The best bit of the video was a guy going nuts at her. Yeah. Like he was the reason that she went so viral. But do you know, the reason that I don't want to play into that is that he knew that. He was quite self-aware of it. And he was getting quite upset that he oh, wasn't really? made the main character. <laughs> it's like, do you remember him, Damn Daniel? No. Do you not remember like the, the, the vine or something that went back? It was like some, some guy in an American high school was filming his friend and he was going, Damn Daniel. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So they were invited onto Ellen and Daniel got given like a lifetime supply of vans. Oh, God. And the, but the guy filming it, he got like one surfboard. But the guy who made it, he's the one who made it. And he presumably already had vans, the guy who was wearing the vans. Yeah, because that was like Dan Daniel back at it again with the white vans. Yeah. Did they make them do it? Were they, was Ellen like, oh, do it. Do like, it. Yeah. <laughs> just say it. Just say oh, it. do it. <laughs> just model, model these trainers for us. But I thought it was quite, I always thought that was quite unfair on the guy who did like the creative heavy lifting. Daniel just existed. But, but could the creative heavy lifting have been lifted had he not worn vans that day to school? Good point. But he did, but he did it. A few times, and he wasn't always wearing trainers. Mm. They could also come on the podcast. To do what? I don't know. Talk to Ben Leo? Yeah, maybe. Anyway. Should we talk about Vivi Stockholm? <laughs> Is this going to be like waiting for God? Or? <laughs> it's going to be like... How long can I derail this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to explain the Bibby Stockholm news? Right, so it's the barge that's off the coast of Dorset, the yep. one that your friend Richard Drax is really upset about mm. because it's bringing down the house prices. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's exactly why he's upset. Anyway, um, so there are 50 asylum seekers who are going to be moved onto that barge today. It's probably happening as we're speaking. Um, but there was a wonderful mess up by the Home Office Minister, Sarah Deans Dines. Crap, we looked this up before. It's Dines. Dines. But, but we thought it'd be quite funny if we said... <laughs> no, no, we didn't think... We, I actually thought that what might have been her name. <laughs> no, but, we, but once we confirmed the pronunciation of her surname, which is for a little while, we're calling her Sarah Dinesh. Yeah, Dinesh. I've just been at Abita. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought maybe it was Dinesh. <laughs> <laughs> but... Anyway, so the Home Office Minister cocked it this morning mm -hmm. because she said that there would be 500 people on it by the end of the week. Um, and then the Home Office and Downing Street have now briefed against her to say there will not be <laughs> that many people on there because that would be a health risk. Yeah, because that's the main... There's lots of people have come out in opposition of housing people on this, on this barge at all, including the Fire Brigade Union. Yeah. Who I think they kind of, they're kind of experts in fire safety. Yeah, well, you would, you would hope. Yeah, well, I, we can only assume. Yeah. And so if they're briefing against people being housed on this... Might be, it might be sensible to listen to them. Yeah, but they are quite woke, aren't they? Because of the, the fire thing. Because they're because they um, woke firefighters. Yeah. Hate fire. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. They they won't let good things burn. 
Is that not a positive thing? <laughs> I don't know. Did you see Denise Welsh, you know, one of the loose women? Yes. Tweeted over Matt the weekend. Matt Healy's mum. Yes, Matt Healy's mum. Um, tweeted about how water is now quite woke. Drinking water. What? She was like, back in my day, no one drank water. <laughs> She was like, my mum maybe had a glass of water when she had her pills. I'm like, yeah, but that's why your mum looks like a used cigarette, Denise. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm plump. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. So um, the point being is that there's this this barge that's now off the coast of of Dorset. Asylum seekers are now being put onto it. And it comes at the same day. So it's it's small boats week, isn't it? mm -hmm. We're in silly season of news. And this is the week of small boats and how they're going to tackle... The, uh, the small boats crisis that's happening on the channel. Um, and the other announcement that was made today is they are looking at moving people who are waiting for the results of their claims onto Ascension Island, which is a protectorate of, the, of Britain that I did not know about. Mm-hmm. You know, when you look at, right, let's just, let's just go, let's purely think about this in terms of empire, right? What we had at one point and then you look at this piece of rock <laughs> in the middle of the... You go, why did you keep that? That's, yeah. that's so crap. But I think because it's such, such a tiny population, isn't it? It's like... No one actually lives there. Oh, really? There's no indigenous population. But as in, so it's only like British people. We, or, we, yeah. Like, I think it's like a population of 800 or something. Yeah, yeah. It? And there's no hospital. Yeah. So I think... Yeah, I kind of think finders keepers in that part. Finders keepers. <laughs> <laughs> but that's sort of like... It kind of looks like the Epstein Island. <laughs> Does it? Having been there, um, <laughs> just... that's where we met. Oh yeah, you, you, and, were... your, you and your octogenarian partner. <laughs> I'd just been shipped on for a night of. I arrived there accidentally. Oh, I was there very intentionally. No, I was looking for Mar-a-Lago. I was like, how have I ended up here? <laughs> you went to Mar-a-Lago by way of. The Caribbean. Yeah, anyway, I was kicked off because I was too old. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> can we use any of this? I'm sure we can. Um, what was my point? <laughs> Going to be about something. Anyway, back to Ascension Island. Oh, it's, <clears throat> I think what's interesting about the conservative kind of asylum policy, if you can call mm. it that, is that they are making all these unrealistic things Kind of, kind of like, so if no one goes to Rwanda, so no one has yet been deported to Rwanda, despite the big hullabaloo made about we've agreed, we made this agreement with with Rwanda. They're making this big thing about the barge has the capacity for X number of people, which will never be filled because mm. of fire and like health and safety regulations. They're now touting Ascension Island as another alternative. If no, even if no one goes there, that will that will fan the flames of anti-immigration rhetoric kind of mm. being like oh woke policy stopped us from being able to do this so even if it's it's no one needs to go to these places this doesn't need to do anything about the actual numbers of people claiming asylum in the uk it's that they've they've like been seen they are have been seen to have tried something mm-hmm. something that's like draconian and evil but that's what they're trying to do they're trying to like just fan the flames of it. Yeah, well, there was that news over the weekend, wasn't there, that Tory MPs were asking for red meat to basically sling at their constituents because, you know, coming up to the next election mm. or preparing for it at least, they need some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of tie. They can go out there and shout things like, oh, we're going we're gonna to shut the <clears throat> doors on Britain or whatever and get everyone <laughs> fired up. But it's kind of like Schrodinger's Rwanda, right? Because like, yeah, it's, it's like, literally that. If it do- yeah, if it never happens, then at least they tried to put this policy yeah. through and you can keep fanning yeah, the yeah. flames on it and get everyone excited and yeah. jumped up about it. But I mean, realistically, like Pretty Patel looked at this in 2020, right? And the Foreign Office were like, <laughs> pretty babe, like we're trying. <laughs> we can't, we can't feasibly put anyone on that island. Mm. It's going to be too expensive. Now, if Patel couldn't get that through, there is no way that Braverman's doing it. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'm crazy enough to try. Yeah. <laughs> I'm cr- I can't believe how many times I've snorted. Oh, I should just say it's you. You've snorted so many oh, times no, on this podcast. Yeah, it's not me at that. all. God, my feet sorry are cold. <laughs> um, what do we think happens next with the Bibby Stockholm? Um... Well, what really can happen next? Because you put them on there. I mean, what, how, is that going to 
speed up processing? Probably not. There's just going to be people on there. And then, oh, do you know what happened in Manston? I mean, we went down there, didn't we? No, I went no. down there with another videographer. Not that you're a videographer. I used to be. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so I went down to Manston and it was right at the time when um, it, it was basically this kind of hollowed out old um, army barracks mm -hmm. and they were putting asylum <coughs> seekers there and all of these diseases are broken up. I mean, I, it, but it wasn't even like normal things. It was like quite archaic things. Mm -hmm. It was like what a Victorian child had. It's like, like diphtheria yeah, was like breaking ripping out. through yeah. these things. And um, all the locals in that area as well were like, yeah, it's it's a bit mental to hear all these children crying every yeah, single yeah, night, yeah. not really enjoying that. They put them up in tents. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so now they've put them on this barge. The Home Office probably still won't get their act together and actually process any of their claims. So these people will be stuck there. And also, can they They can't get off, can they? It's on barge. the sea. I think they can. I think they can kind of come and go-ish. It's, it it's, it's on sea, but it's like in the port. There's like a gangway or something. No, it looked like it's out to sea. I don't think it is out to sea. Well, anyway, we were going to go down there, but I was explaining to Ed that I've got really nice dinner plans this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if someone else wants to go. Maybe I will go down there. Um, well, the thing about the Ascension Island thing, if, that, if people were to be held there for processing, mm. it's so far away from any kind of oversight. Which is actually kind of the frightening thing about that. The barge or Ascension? Ascension Island. Yeah. So if, if so, they could say, oh, yeah, We've um, there's a appropriate accommodation. Everyone was being treated according to <laughs> their human rights. Yeah, and it's not like there's there's not an, I can't imagine there's an Ascension Island media to scrutinise that. There's no real infrastructure to get there. Yeah, you so and think about when um, was it the Home Office did a trip to Rwanda, like a media trip, and only took right wing outlets. Yeah. Who, who were like, oh, yeah, it's sick out here. Yeah, they're like, oh, it's lovely. So, if, so that's maybe the only way that would make logistical sense to get to Ascension Island. Yeah, we'll ignore the fact that a week before that people were shot during a gay pride march, but, you know, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's... Um, I think it's just quite frightening for people in, in that situation who are, like, desperate people. Just yeah, of course. With, with utter contempt. Yeah, of course. I mean, we, we, we went to Calais. We spent quite a bit of time down there. Yeah. I, I do... A lot of a lot of the comments that get made on broadcast or on panels when we're talking about it are so out of this world to me because I don't under none of these people, none of these commentators have ever been to Calais. No. None of them have been to, you know, Afghanistan or anything like that, or have ever fled war. They'll be on there shouting about the Ukrainians, about how they need to be housed properly or whatever, and you know, Putin or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then the, in the same breath, they'll be like, We should torture them until <laughs> they leave. It's so obscene. Yeah. Um this whole Ascension Island thing though is basically what um What's his name? I should have looked it up before. Alistair Downing, wasn't it? He was the Australian guy who came up with the concept of Christmas Island oh, yeah, in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was deporting people from uh, Australia onto this island just off the coast of Australia. And he was advising the Home Office at one point. So I'm guessing this idea has come from him. But the big problem with that island was like, you know, when journalists actually finally got there, they found essentially some kind of interim camp mm -hmm. and it was full of disease. Mm -hmm. uh, there, Terrific. There was sexual uh, sexual assault off, off the scale. I mean, they were like in women-only areas, like a lot of them were pregnant. It's like, oh, wow, how did that happen? Yeah, Jesus. Yeah? Um, really, really horrendous. So yeah, how are you going to do any kind of checks and balances on Ascension Island? Mm -hmm. I mean, I highly doubt any of the favourable media teams that are going to be allowed to go to that island are going to do a good job of investigating it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it sucks. Okay, so this is Keir Starmer. So Keir Starmer has written in The Times today. Brilliant. Uh, he has written about Just Up Oil, and he's described their drilling demands as contemptible. Now, what this is, this is, needs a bit of context. So Grant Shapps, a couple of weeks ago, put out a letter basically <laughs> <laughs> linking. So someone who donates to the Labour Party has been sympathetic to Just Up Oil, and then by the powers of deduction, Grant Shapps has said, Keir Starmer is in bed with Just Stop Oil, right? He described the Labour Party as the political wing of Just Stop Oil. That's the one. He was like, listen, if Keir Starmer could himself, with his own body, plug an oil field, he would do it. <laughs> he, he has himself plugged yeah. the North He's the North never Street not pipeline. protesting, chaining himself to motorways, yeah. etc. Yeah. That's the Keir Starmer we all know. And then what Keir Starmer has done in retaliation is covered himself in oil <laughs> and walked through the streets of Westminster shouting, I love uh, it! I love it. Feel me more. <laughs> um, yeah, so he basically said that their demands are, uh, yeah, are 
are too much and we're not going to cow down to them. And it, yeah, it's all a bit, I get it. He's trying to appeal to someone. Yeah, people but, think just a loyal. But it's also Labour won't revoke any existing licences. So even the hundred new ones. Yeah. Which don't serve any purpose in combating climate change or emissions. But that, to be fair, he has said that about every single policy that the Conservatives have put down. Like, there's been like a really abhorrent policy, like for example, the protest laws that were brought mm -hmm. in, which was like, you know, you can have a one person protest by just, and you can be arrested for that. Stan was like, well, I'm not sure if we can repeal that, <laughs> but we will have a little think about yeah. it. He, he's just not, he's not nailing his colours to any mast. No, I wonder, I can't remember who it was, but someone said they would like a little bit more <laughs> a bit more sugar with their medicine. Right. I think like Starmer's really spelling out his like sensibleness mm -hmm. in quotation marks as in like that's how the commentary would describe it. Like he's being sensible about politics. He's saying he's not promising anything massive. He's kind of setting, tempering people's expectations. Because it will, because if, if there's a Labour government, it will be hard. Like it, it won't be overnight. Everything is brilliant regardless of wh whatever Labour government came into power. But I think people do need a bit of excitement, mm -hmm. a bit of, oh, a po I have a positive association with the Labour Party rather than it just being a protest vote. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Uh, what I don't get is the kind of the policies that are being put forward. I don't understand why they're not coming in talking about how the, the Tories have had poor stewardship of the economy. Mm -hmm. Right. They haven't they haven't you know added things up. There's all these crony contracts and all of this sort of stuff. Why don't they come in and say, this is how we will spend your money? And not yeah. not just every single time say, oh, we're going to introduce a non-dom tax and then, you know, mm. pay for to clear the back, NHS backlog with that. Like, come in with something that the country can actually look forward to, as you're saying. Offer us free school meals. Like, Jesus Christ, just mm. let the mm. children eat something. Yep. Um, you know, talk about, you know, building the 40 new hospitals that the Conservatives couldn't be bothered to construct. Talk about how you're going to get people on the housing ladder. Do things that are exciting. Mm. Do you think even if, even if they don't want to do that, do you think it'd be worth something if they were like, you know, just kind of the, the reflex anti-Tory-ness that's quite like FBP, mm. like just being like, they're, they're liars, etc. If they like came in and said, spelled out, this is exactly how we would behave in public service, like completely transparently, even if it wasn't like exciting policy-wise, it would give people more of like a, oh, they, they are committing to being honest, transparent. Mm. This is like, they'll have, we intend to have full breakdown of government spending, procurement, Etc. Rather than just kind of the opaqueness. Yeah. But but do you think that would, would that would that be anything? It would be something, wouldn't yeah. it? I mean, what have we got right now? Kind of, it, kind of just it reflexive, reflexive anti-conservatism. Mm. Yeah. Well. Yeah, and all of the polling we've said this before, but all of the polling does show that people are only going for Starmer because they don't like the conservatives. Mm -hmm. It's not actually. It's not actually anything flavorful, you know. No. Oh, but how did? But then, what would what would he what would he do? What would he like? I I kind of think Starmer's problem now is so much kind of anti-Starmer sentiment is so embedded mm -hmm. that I wonder even if he was to suddenly switch and promise a lot and commit to a lot, would kind of Starmer's critics from the left would they, would they? Change their mind? Would they, would, they, would they then support him? I think you're going to really struggle. I mean, but he also doesn't want the left. No, true, He true. doesn't want the far left. Which Also, far left, far left is quite a disingenuous term because it it kind of equates with far right, <laughs> yeah. which are two, two very different things. Yeah, the socialists of the party, the socialist wing of the mm -hmm. party, which he has worked really hard to expunge, aren't, aren't going to leap on him. But they might. I mean, young people, I really think the key to the next election is housing. Mm. And if there is some kind of government back loan, say you've paid your rent and you can prove it for seven years, mm. every single month you've paid 850 pounds, which is norm normal for mm. people in big cities. You can have a government backed mortgage. Yep. That would be the hot ticket. Yeah. I might even vote for that. <laughs> and what were you going to do before? Well, Lib Dem. <laughs> that is but then, then I suppose there's not enough houses as well. You need to, yeah. They, they, that would need to go hand in hand with. Yeah, but you'd be like, I'm going to build. Yeah. I'm going to build. It just doesn't, it just, but even just talking about that, I'm just like, well, Starmer is obviously not going to do that. It's just but also pro converting office property because there's been a conversation about that recently. Go wants to do it, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. He wants to, like, if you've built an office block, you can turn it into housing and vice versa. Yeah. 
yeah, I think there's, they need to be creative about housing, don't they? Yeah. But there is no creativity in our politics right now. No. It's pretty bleak, that. It's very it? bleak. Is anyone offering anything sexy? Um, no. Mm. No is the answer. Oh, cool. That's good. Anyway. Move, moving on? Yes. Let's go. We're back to Liz Truss. Mm. Liz Truss, uh, as reported in The Times, uh, people have turned down Liz Truss's humiliating offer to be in her resignation honours. Mm. Uh, Truss's list is said to have had 14 names and is currently being vetted by the House of Lords Appointment Committee. Um, Holak, Holak, which is what it's, yeah. And Holak in the news only a mere few weeks ago yep. for vetoing Nadine Dorries. Yep. Kept our girl out of the Lords. <laughs> and kept Ollie's girl, Charlotte Owen. In the in. Lords. Feels wrong talking about Charlotte Owen with Ollie not here to defend yeah, her. Yeah, I know. Yeah. God, we're going to be so biased, aren't we? Oh, so- <laughs> Oh, that's what Ollie's doing. Ollie's off at Holak. <laughs> <laughs> Sticking up, frothing at the mouth. Yeah. With Charlotte Owen. Letting everyone in. Oh, he's going to be... Going, uh, Are you sure only 14, Liz? Come on. <laughs> Come on. There's got to be... Uh, there's got to be another 30-year-old who's done nothing. <laughs> two peerages for Charlotte, please. Um, yeah. King of the Lords. Would it, would it be humiliating to accept a peerage from Liz Truss? Uh, look... Would I do it? Probably. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I kind of don't really... Th- like, if you're going to accept a peerage from a prime minister... Yeah. Does it really matter which prime minister it is? The most humiliating part of it would be, like, you've basically told the world, like, I was friends with Liz Truss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she likes me enough for this. But let's have a little look at the list, okay? So you've got Matthew Elliott, who famously ran the Vote Leave campaign. Yep. Big architect of that. Mark Littlewood, the outgoing IEA chief. Yeah. Now, do you know what I have to say for Mark? He really left quite a big stain on the economy and quite a lasting impression with mm-hmm. his chaotic trustonomics. And I just don't think we should let that go. No. So maybe we should keep him there so that every time he's, you know... Well, keep him in the Lords yeah. or the IEA. Uh, no, in the Lords. So every time he's about town, we can go, oh, God, there's that guy who uh, cut to the economy. <laughs> but then also as well, I don't really want them to be a, a legislator, which was my main objection to Charlotte Owen being in the House of Lords, famously. Yeah. I don't think... Yeah, I don't, I don't really think he should be rewarded for bucking the country and then having another opportunity to do that again for life. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I agree with yeah. that. But I'm trying to think of other points because Ollie isn't here. Shall I just do an impression of him? <laughs> do an impression of Ollie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you'll find, Ed, that actually Mark Littlewood spoke for a lot of people <laughs> when he really cocked up the economy. I really actually think it was quite good mm. for all of those. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll have you know that good friends of Liz Truss were able to short the pound. <laughs> and you want to take that money back from them, do you? <laughs> you selfish prick. <laughs> I was like, oh, uh, this, is me, this is me being Ollie again. Yep. Uh, I was speaking to a small holdings farmer the other day. He was actually really in favour of Mark Littlewood. And we yep. can't overstate the importance of small hold farms going yep. forward. And we can't, we cannot understate how good it's been having that grain shortage from Ukraine from like his small holdings farm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else is Ollie like? He's not even growing grain. What, what else is Ollie like that we can talk about? Um, what does he like? Birmingham City. Does he? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what the football team supports. It, really? Did you not know that? I had no idea. Really? Um, God, you, you think you don't know someone. He likes being married? He does like being married. <laughs> he hasn't explicitly said so. But we can assume. We can, we'd like to assume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, God, what else? Do, what else is he like? Oh, he likes getting the Ghanaian on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. He likes going to a stall <laughs> near our office <laughs> and having Ghanaian food for lunch. He likes pickled onion flavored Monster Munch. Yep. Always two bags. That guy <laughs> never one. <laughs> Always two. <laughs> it's like it's like he's in the room. <laughs> And he see, really likes Charlotte Owen. See, seeing how um, we seem to have run out of conversation, do you want to read out the list of topics that were suggested <laughs> to you? So Ava tweeted asking for ideas for, from ideas for podcast topics. And uh, we're just going to run through some and see if that sparks any, any, imagina- any of our imaginations. I, I actually tweeted, can you send me your absolute worst podcast topic ideas? It's for a thing. The thing is upsetting it. <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be Ava's 
uh, raison d'etre today, by the way. Okay, so Megara Fury, friend of the podcast. Friend of the pod. Yeah. Uh, Carrie Johnson, decorating advice. <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> oh, is that having her on for decorating advice? Yeah. Right. I thought it was just like... You're the wallpaper. Yeah, right? no, no, I, I get the joke, but having... I thought the idea of having just that as a subject is very funny. Yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. Kazvani, mental health. Yeah. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? <laughs> a podcast on why more straight white men should start making podcasts that's quite good I think this is a good advert for that I'm reading these blind by the way yeah. so I'm trying to read them before because I'm panicking but no okay Matt Hancock stand-up comedy good what was the stand-up comedy well I we'd find out on the podcast what does Nigel Farage use for his dental care and does it involve party bangers what does that what, mean what's a party is that a is that like a you know the silly Holy thing. Do you know what I'm getting nervous about with doing this? And I'll just tell you a quick little story about one time when I was a, a producer for Overnights uh-huh. early on in my career. Uh-huh. And um, I specifically said to the presenter multiple times, please, can you stop reading the texts as they come in? Like, can you just wait for me to edit them mm-hmm. so that they're not, you're not reading out something mental? He was not listening to me and he was just reading them out. So he then goes and reads one out. I'm not even joking. He goes, oh, someone's called me a nonce. <laughs> <laughs> but then he goes which is absolutely incredible he goes well so what if I am a nonce and I was like oh, I'm gonna take this to the ad break <laughs> did not know what a nonce was you, you could, someone could do quite a good clip of you saying so what if I'm a nonce fuck <laughs> <laughs> fuck yeah. anyway there was another really good one when he didn't know what I don't know if you can say this on a podcast I have to, might have to bleep it. Okay. Beef curtains. You can obviously say that. No, you can't. It's Why? like it's like top of the Ofcom list. We're not on off. We're not certified by Ofcom. No, I know, but it's really bad. Is what I'm saying. Well, beef curtains. Did you mean beef? Beef curtains. I don't think it's, I think we've said worse things in this podcast. Okay. Well, anyway, so he was like, he was like, it's actually so bad. He was like, oh, what's M- Minjita is trying to fix her beef curtains. <laughs> But they won't stay up. And I was just like watching this and it was like two he in the morning. Read that out. Yes, he read that out. I just sat there like, Jesus Christ. Who was this person? Oh well, I'll tell you after. Well, no, that's what I mean, as in like <laughs> how did they get a job presenting live radio? Well, I think he went to school with the editor. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's how we got our job. He was amazing. He actually once asked me if I could feel his biceps because he thought they were the biggest on the central line. And I'm not just saying this. He what? didn't mean it in a sexually, sexual way. He just had no self-awareness whatsoever. That's absolutely. Ins- and did he have big biceps? I, I didn't feel them. Okay. But on the central, like on the central, were you he, on the central line? No, he'd been on the central line and he was like, I think I've got the biggest biceps on my central line carriage. But then you have no way to compare that. No, no unit of measure. No. But I guess he wanted me to feel them and go, God. Huge. Yeah. Uh, did we, <laughs> we leave, should we leave it there? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, nice. was, that was certainly a podcast. Um, I hope you all enjoyed it. If you, maybe if you didn't, well, even if you didn't, you should go over to our subreddit, r slash politics show, to have a chat with us. Um, Thank you for being here, Eva. No, nothing, nothing oh, back. so do you want me to say something yeah, else? Yeah, Sorry, nice. uh, thank, thank you for having me, Ed. Uh, our, our co-hosted podcast. We uh, didn't even talk about the Raya thing. Oh, uh, Eva's on Raya, Raya No, 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 that's not what we were oh. going to say. <laughs> <laughs> what was the Raya Never mind. See, see you next oh, time. Bye. <laughs>